Hello and welcome or welcome back to Read Becca for a book discussion today. We're going to talk about Exordia by Seth Dickinson, uh, the new release from the author of Traitor Baru Cormorant, and I believe Seth's first foray into science fiction. This is a deceptively short looking book, but it's over 500 pages and it, it is very, very vast and expansive while also being almost entirely set in one location and set over a relatively short period of time in a contemporary setting for the most part. This is a chaotic first contact scenario. So we start with an individual named Anna who is in New York. She is a Kurdish American who has immigrated as a child. And as a result of her past, she has a lot of trauma in her, her background, a lot of baggage and a lot of things to overcome in her life because of that, um, prejudices against her that have prevented her from really having a lot of success. And so she is just struggling to get by pretty much. And then one day she's walking through the park and at the turtle pond, she notices an alien eating the turtles. To everyone else, it appears to be a woman eating a giant tub of yogurt, <laughs> but uh, to her, she for some reason can see this alien. So I feel like that is a pretty tried and true trope of uh, sci-fi where certain people have the special ability to see aliens. Here, <laughs> that is special and unique in that the alien becomes her roommate <laughs> almost immediately. And I love that quirky lead in in part one. So part one is quite short and is focused entirely on Anne and this alien living together, getting to know each other. The alien increasingly um, putting demands on Anna's life and really this alien just kind of wants to sit around and read books, watch rom-coms and, and try food. <laughs> And I loved that dynamic. It was so fun and funny. And Anna is so jaded that her juxtaposed up against this alien and having these kind of deep conversations was so great. It almost gave me some murder bot vibes there at the beginning. So, however, that is not what this book is. So, so unfortunately for, I think me and a lot of readers, I wanted that to be the book. I, I really love that part the most, um, but I did also very much enjoy what this book is. So immediately after that first short part where we're introduced, we wind up on a frenetic journey across the world to the location of an alien object. Things begin moving increasingly quickly, and it is, I think, intentionally disorienting and jarring by alternating perspectives, by putting us in the heads of people with very different viewpoints about the world, a really wide and diverse cast. The characterization is very rich though, so they all feel like tangible, believable characters who have unique identities, different life experiences, and really, really different perspectives on the situation that they are in. And as I said, this is a very chaotic first contact in that your usual first contact situation, uh, you have kind of all the world governments and specialists, the best of the best coming together to solve a problem, right? Here, not so much. We have a, a couple of military guys from the US who are involved in covert drone programs and have had some, some gray moral questions in their background that we explore through their characterization. We're introduced to them along with some, some individuals who are STEM specialists. And they're, they're kind of just starting to set up. And we, we watch as people setting up, then chaos explodes <laughs> periodically. We randomly will have things like strangers just driving up, screaming in different languages that they don't understand each other. People holding guns on both sides, not knowing how they should react and then kind of going, oh, the Russians are here or the Chinese are here. And it is that sort of sense that makes it feel realism to me. I feel like there would be a lot less cooperation than is usually depicted in these sort of scenarios. So the chaos feels very real and believable. And as we're jumping heads constantly through the middle section of the book, we are seeing so many different sides of what could be happening. The sense of playfulness and humor to the characters, I think really lends to them feeling real uh, because even in really dire circumstances, they are still cracking jokes sometimes with each other and even inadvertently saying very humorous things because they're kind of in an awkward situation. <laughs> and they each have their own quirks, definitely. Uh, at one point, I think there are people running around kind of concerned that things are going down and saying, well, maybe we should get out of here and asking, well, what, what do you want to do to this person who's really focused on solving the math problem of this thing that they're facing? And 
And the person responds basically just, well, I kind of want to stay and just keep doing my math. And it was so funny. It cracked me up in the moment because I could exactly relate to, to that of just being so focused on the problem and not worrying about anything outside. And I think that for me, if you like uh, maybe Hanu Ranyemi and Max Gladstone, those are very good comparisons because they also have a really rich sense of characterization and world building in a similar way to this that always has a sort of playful feel to it. And I found this really reminiscent to that. I also really love that this is engaging with non-Western perspectives. Uh, initially, this being in New York, I thought, oh, okay, we're going to get an outsider perspective, this Kurdish American immigrant in the Western world going through first contact. But no, this almost entirely takes place outside of the Western world. It focuses a couple of characters who are American, but primarily characters who are not from a Western lens. And I think that that, that was so important for the messaging that this is trying to get across. And that really is the negative impacts of militarism and the collateral damage to other people, to people that even we don't intend, um, the, the people we aren't targeting, how it affects entire societies and people groups. And I think it did a very effective job of doing that, expressing how, how America deals with those who have less power than them. And then also looking at what happens when we're on the flip side and we have less power. Um, how do we react? And what does that mean for us? And I think it got at both the human individual story of that, of the collateral damage of militarism, and also the broader societal impacts at a, a grand scale. And I think that was very masterful in how it was laid out and the journey that this book took us on to show us that. So I really, really loved that. For me, the beginning and the end of this book were absolutely stellar. I loved it both. The middle was maybe my one big wobble for this. It's very long and it felt like a slog a lot of the time. To what I was saying earlier, it does feel extremely disorienting and jarring and I feel that's intentional, but I feel I could have gotten that in maybe 100 pages instead of 300 pages and I didn't feel a lot of forward momentum. Reading through that middle section, it certainly felt like a lot was happening. We're constantly changing perspectives and it feels action packed, but every time I thought about it, nothing had really progressed forward. So there, was, there wasn't a lot of forward momentum through the middle and that is what lent to feeling this log. But I didn't dislike it. I think I understood what the author was trying to do and just needed to condense that down a little bit more than it was. Um, so I didn't hate it, but it, it was not quite a five star because of the slowness of the middle. So those are the weaker elements, but the strengths, I, I've already referenced the characters and the world building do such a great job. The world building is almost grounded, completely hard sci-fi at moments, really focused on, on math and technology. And then we will put a foot into the full on weird <laughs> at times and expressing or exploring this, this idea of alien philosophy and ideology in a really interesting way. And at, at times we're being taken through the foundations of how alien emotions might work um, or how they, how they do work, what the, the pillars of their kind of ideology are. And they're also having this expressed in a translated way in terms that humans would understand. And so we're hearing about aspects that are completely tangible and real to an alien that they're talking about heaven and hell and souls and devils and things that are verging into the metaphysical but yet there are these very real tangible things to an alien and the way that they're discussing them is it makes so much sense and it's so it's so easy to latch onto as if it is reality so i loved the way that that juxtaposition of of really hard true science and metaphysical were right up against each other and from the characters the strength there in characterization is just how diverse and, and broad ranging the perspectives are and that Dickinson managed to get into everybody's heads and emotions for us. Um, there's a really lengthy author's note at the back where he, he talks about having gone through so much effort to get it right and kind of apologizing if he doesn't get it right because he recognizes he doesn't have all of these perspectives but he really put himself out there to do everything within his power to make sure. 
Um, he, he doesn't gloss over the fact that these people speak different languages. And so people are constantly just exclaiming in a different language and it's not translated there for us. And he, he outright says, yeah, you, if you have the internet, you can go look it up. Just like, just like I and the readers who were checking for me are able to do, you know, we all have that ability now and that, that connectedness now, I think. So that was, that was interesting and something that we are seeing more and more of, I think, in books. And I love that he remained true to that vision of keeping these characters as, as they are in their, their own mind, um, not sanitizing them into something that is a little bit more palatable or easy to read, I guess, because they do have these truly, for me, very foreign perspectives. And there are times, because I, I love linguistics in sci-fi, I think it was underexplored here maybe, where I wanted to, it to be at the forefront. I think it is a very background element that this is super anthropological and linguistic, but that's, it's not directly foreground. I really enjoyed having it in the back of my mind of like constantly questioning what language are, are people talking to each other? Is this conversation that's being had something everyone would actually be able to, to know and hear because they're all speaking English or are these people speaking in their na native tongue? And so having that in the back of my mind, how, how different and different life experiences that these people have been through creating layers to what's going on through the story, really. So I just, I just really enjoyed this, I think, um, to what I just said. This has so many layers. There is a depth and richness to what Dickinson has explored and has laid out on the page with that one, that one detractor that it's, it's over long. It didn't need to be 500 pages, I think. Um, but as, as it goes for a standalone science fiction that's exploring really big concepts, I think this did really deliver. So I don't have any major complaints about it. And it definitely pushed me to want to go explore the Baru Cormorant series more quickly than I have been because it's been sitting on my shelf for a very long time and I know it's going to break my heart. Um, so I do actually want to, now that I've, I've kind of wrapped up what I wanted to say, this was great, it's weird, it's inventive and fresh, first contact sci-fi with a lot of chaos, a lot of commentary on militarism and collateral damage that we're doing in this world that feels very timely. Um, so if you do not want spoilers, I will leave that there. But if you want to stay for spoilers, I want to discuss the end a little bit. So, so now is the spoilery section. Okay, so if you're here for spoilers, you want to hear what I have to say about the end, because the end is wild. Um, and I've seen people actually say they think this is a cliffhanger. I do not understand how it's a cliffhanger, um, but w whatever. <laughs> so there are a lot of people in this book and we continually are getting more and more people introduced pretty much and a lot of people die whether they're inconsequential or consequential <laughs> and so i generally am one of those people who hates when an author kills off characters and then brings them back that does happen <laughs> including some some primary characters but i didn't i didn't hate it mainly because he just kills them off and they're immediately back <laughs> And so there was no like grieving process. He's not there like using it to emotionally manipulate the reader because they're instantly like right back there. <laughs> um, and I, I loved the way he did that. And it was, it was so unexpected and strange and completely caught me off guard. And I love that he did that instead of what usually happens with that, where, like I said, it's usually there to cheaply deus ex machina manipulate the reader into emotion, emotion. And there wasn't any of that. <laughs> And it kind of did get to the point where I was just like expecting people to die. So that that's the vague aspect. Um, so my reason for commenting on that is that's a thing I normally hate and I love the way he did it here. And then the big spoiler, the actual discussion of, of the end explicitly. I love the end because we have a group who are, who are flying away in an alien spaceship basically as the world is being destructed basically or earth is being destructed and then there's a line and then they all died and i love that it was again it completely caught me off guard and we know they can come back uh, assuming conditions are right and they do and so it for me read as like this this resurrection mythology and i thought that was brilliant because throughout the book there were so many points where we were signposted with the idea of of someone dying so other people can live. And it feels like that was a delivery on this, um, where not necessarily a direct connection to that idea, 
but but that was the philosophy that was being delivered and so i just love that like resurrection myth and creating that that connectedness to what we see then back on earth where we have a small group of kurds walking away to start something new and i think we had been shown through the entire book how kurds have fought back have done what they had to to survive and they have they were always survivors through through the entirety and that led to this to them being the last survivors potentially we don't really get the broader picture but we we think that there's nobody else and it's just them and they're going to start something new and i thought that was just such a great way of of centering that message that we were hearing in the background how how much they've been through and how much they have survived so far and now they're going to continue on i just love it so so anyway so those are my spoilery thoughts on the ending um i felt like it came together just so beautifully and it really took a brilliant mind to to do those two things because they are very unusual ways of executing a sci-fi novel and yet feel very hopeful despite kind of mass extinction how do you deliver that that is i guess the genius of seth dickinson he managed to give us a hopeful ending to a mass extinction event i loved it so anyway so hopefully if you are still here you were here for spoilers and you have also read the book because I really need to hear other people's thoughts about the ending. Uh, some people apparently think that it means there has to be another book, a sequel, and it does not mean that at all to me. So I'm questioning if I if I misread it. <laughs> um, it is kind of it is kind of open to interpretation for sure. Uh, so leave me leave me comments down below with a lot of space so you don't spoil someone else uh, because I am desperately in need to hear what other people think about the ending. Uh, so I think that is it for me today. I highly recommend Exordia. <laughs> so I hope more people will pick it up. And thank you so very much for watching.